Today I'm going to be reading to you from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, verses 25 through 33. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you build wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. Wow. Now, I have a question for you. What does the word disciple mean to you? Disciple has the same root as our word math. And the meaning of math is mental effort needed to think something through. It, so it goes beyond just parroting what uh, the master says and what the master does to actually doing the mental work, really thinking things through, trying to understand the motives and the principles behind the teachings and lifestyle of the Master. Here Jesus says, if we are to be his disciples, we must go so far as to understand what the cost of that discipleship is going to be. Jesus pairs carrying our cross with following him. In fact, we often see this pairing in the New Testament. In Luke chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus had already said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Now, why is carrying a cross paired with following Jesus? Well, you can't follow Jesus, obviously, without going to the cross now, can you? But I wonder, does he mean that literally? No, we're not all going to be crucified. Um, although many disciples in the first century were crucified and many disciples throughout history have been martyred for uh, their allegiance to Jesus. So why is it paired with following Jesus to carry the cross? In Luke chapter 14, verse 33, Jesus added, In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. No, what everything is Jesus talking about? When I read this verse, I thought of Jim Elliot, uh, an American missionary to South America who wrote in his journal, He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. And Jim Elliot, in fact, did, <laughs> was martyred on the mission field. Um, in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 20, Jesus said, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. So we give up everything here to gain something eternal. Verses 27 to 33 capture the main point of Jesus' teaching here. A disciple must carry their cross, follow in the master's footsteps, which lead to crucifixion, and third, give up everything. Not the kinds of things uh, one would expect to see on a recruiting poster, uh, for, you know, to advertise our church, 
But that is what Jesus is saying is involved in truly being a disciple of Jesus Christ. To illustrate this point that one should count the cost before following Jesus, Jesus talks about counting the cost of building, you know, getting a building estimate, and counting the cost of battle. So kind of makes me wonder what are we as the church supposed to be building? And against who or what are Jesus' disciples to be battling? I think we're to be building Christ's kingdom that would reflect the kingdom of God on earth. And against who are we to be battling or what are we to be battling? I think we're to be battling the evil that resists the breaking in of God's kingdom. Is it possible that Jesus literally wants us to hate our families and our own lives? In uh, verse 26, right at the beginning here, uh, Jesus said, you know, if anyone comes to me and does not hate father, and mother, wife, and children, brothers, and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Does Jesus really want us to hate our family and hate ourselves, hate our own lives? Uh, well, let's think about that. Because Jesus, six times, <laughs> six times in the New Testament, we find Jesus quoting the fifth commandment to honor your father and your mother. So I'm going to go with a hard no on the hating your family. That is certainly not something that uh, Jesus teaches. Uh, you know, family is, family is extremely important, and a lot of the New Testament talks about the value of our families and what, what our responsibilities are to our families. So what is Jesus getting at here when, when he says that we need to hate our families and our own lives? Well, the, the word that's translated hate here can mean hate, and it is used that way um, often in uh, Greek writing, but its proper meaning is to renounce one choice in favor of another. And so when you compare your allegiance to your family and your reliance upon your family to your love of Jesus, Jesus is saying, look, that's... That is going to be something like hate compared to the love that you should have for God. So this is an example. Jesus uh, uses a rhetorical device called hyperbole where he will exaggerate to make a point. In uh, the, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, you know, uh, he says that if your eye offends you to pluck it out and if your hand offends you to cut it off, well, He's not saying that we're supposed to be going around maiming ourselves. He's using exaggeration to make a point. And he's doing the same thing here. The, our allegiance is to Christ in such a way that compared to that, everything else looks like hate. Now I have another question for you. We, you know, we're, we're carrying a cross and giving up everything when we follow Jesus. So. When we face hardship or opposition in working for the kingdom, on what resources will we rely? Where can, where can we turn? You see, in the culture of that day, everyone would turn to their family or they would rely on their financial resources. Or if it was uh, their kingdom that was being threatened, they would rely upon their military might. And so Jesus here is saying, look, you, you can't be... You can't be relying on your family to go and follow me into this conflict with the established system, with the, with the fallen world. You are going to face resistance and you, you're gonna need something more than family. You're gonna need something more than money. You're gonna need something more than armies. You're gonna need God himself with you. Psalm 20 verse seven says, some trust in chariots and some in horses but we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. So when we go forth, we go forth in the name of Jesus. We go forth relying upon Jesus to carry us through. So yes, we carry a cross, we give up everything, but we gain treasures in heaven. We gain a resurrected kingdom life 
in Jesus Christ. We gain having Jesus with us through everything that we go through. So before you make a decision about whether or not you're going to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, Jesus says, count the cost. You're going to lose some things, but you're going to gain the treasures of heaven. You're going to gain life in the presence of God himself. So, what is your choice going to be? Are we willing to pay the cost to follow him?